and welcome. Uh, today we're having a look at this one, the Flashforge Dreamer. Uh, it's a really good dual-headed 3D printing, uh, 3D printer from uh, the manufacturer of Flashforge. Um, so let's have a look on the outside. Uh, as you can see, there's a 3.5 touch um, inch touch screen, uh, as well as a acrylic lid, which you can open and close. And there's a few magnets here, just keeping it closed. On the right side of the machine, you have SD card, USB, a reset button, and of course the power. Uh, on the back side, you have two fans working together with the uh, internal PLA cooler. Um, so you actually have um, two systems helping you uh, push out the, the warm air if you want to do uh, PLA. But you also have the fans here to control the ABS environment. So you actually have a temperature meter inside. Uh, which will monitor the actual um, uh, air around the, the whole model. So it keeps it at a good level. So if it's too hot, which could damage and wear out the, uh, the wires in, in the long run, it will start to push, push out the air from, from the back here. Uh, on the right side and actually on the left side as well, you have the uh, two hatches, which you can open if you want to feed filament from the outside. Um, and on the top here, you have a openable lid so you can actually open this up and uh, from here you can actually see that you have these small lids here so if you want you can actually stack a few of these machines uh, on top of each other um, other than that if we look at the um, extruder itself it has two 1.75 millimeter extruders um, they're at 0.4 millimeter per nozzle and also their direct drive, direct drive with a really stiff spring, so really get that good, good grip on the filament. Uh, on top of that, you also have the PLA cooler here on the the left side of the filament. So you have a, a fan duct, and it cools actually both of the extruders. Um, during our tests, we haven't really noticed any difference on the extruders, but in theory, you should have a little bit better PLA cooling on the left extruder since it's closer to the fan. But we haven't really noticed any difference there. Um, you also have the um, the system in here, and so, so the direct drives here they can actually um, do both um, ABS, PLA, nylon. Uh, they can do uh, softer materials as well, like NinjaFlex and Eco. Uh, on top of that, you also have the heated build plate, which is 230 by 150 and 140 millimeter. Uh, so it's almost 5 liters of print volume. Um, you also have uh, integrated spools. So you can see here you have two spool holders. Therefore, um, to maximize the volume so you don't have to have any spools on the back. But that also means that you, you're kind of stuck with the 0.6 kilogram um, spools that, that's provided. So within the box you get one ABS and one PLA in, in various colors. Um, but a lot of you guys are using one kilogram or even bigger um, spools that doesn't fit inside here. So thanks to the lids here on the side, you can actually feed a material from outside. Or if you want, you can print a spool holder here on the sides. So if you need to have a, a, a really volume efficient printer, maybe you can spare a few uh, spool sizes on the, on the sides here and actually stack the printers instead. I don't know. But it's, uh, it's, it's a good way of not limiting you, so you don't set a limit on what kind of spools you're, you're using. It's just that they, they have a, good, a few good arguments why you should use their spools, because they fit inside here. Otherwise, it's, um, there's no really new fancy features, it's, it's a standard machine. Uh, the good thing here is the uh, LCD display, so you can actually... LCD touch, I sh should say, so you can actually navigate through you have all the the um, monitoring modes you have the preheat you have the um, the different um, le leveling systems and so on um, so i mean if, if there's we'll go through those as well uh, later in the video so here in the top screens menu you have print preheat and tools so if you check at prints uh, you can uh, print from the internal memory and the external so in, in the internal here we have a few g codes you can preheat and you can easily choose which one you want to preheat or not. It's very quick. You can also change the temperatures by clicking on it and, and selecting a temperature. So for example, we're just um, using the two um, nozzles to heat them up. 
And on the under, you can also print from the memory card, so a few files here, so it's very easy to just go around. In the tools menu, we can load and unload filament, of course. We have the leveling script that um, levels the build plates. So there's no automatic leveling, you still have to, um, to change it yourself. Uh, you can home all the axes. And of course you have the manual uh, movement as well, so you can move the filament depending on which axis you want to move it in. And also see which value is it is at. So that's pretty neat, actually. During the settings you have language, you have the touch panel adjustment, factory resets, fan on, Wi-Fi update, fully enabled filament detectors and so on. Um, you can also see the status menu here, where you can see all the different temperatures. Um, about the machine, serial number, version, etc, um, etc. Et so there we go, that's the touch me menu. So this is the Flash Print software. Uh, it's a quite similar clone to MakerBot's desktop software. Um, so you have the different menus, you have print, supports and, and, um, and files. So let's just pick up a file here. and. Um, load it in, a SDL file, so there we go, the 3D bench sheet. So uh, within the supports we actually have a, a lot of tools like Simplify 3D where we can add supports, um, either automated or we can uh, choose here from, from baseline or liner. You can create all the supports, just takes a few seconds to calculate, so there you go, support material. It's pretty neat actually, that, uh, and easy to tear off. You can also do the linear ones. So it's a more robust solution. Of course, you can then, uh, well, of course, remove them all, but you can also do the manuals. So you add support material where you want it. It's, it's actually quite clever. Um, the contact um, is, isn't always the best, but it works. We can go back from that, and we can go through the print settings. So, of course, you can preview, you can print it directly from USB or Wi-Fi, directly to your machine. I haven't had my connected right there. You can choose between the pre-aligned, um, pre-assigned materials. You can have support on either left or right and raft on left or right. You also have the wall, which protects the filament during um, dual extrusion. You can see the rest of the settings. It's just normal setting. There's, there's no really advanced stuff. Uh, it's temperatures, you have, well, everything needed really, and the automated cooling fan, for example. So when you're ready, you're, you can just click uh, OK or, or to, to regenerate your G-code. So there we go, we're slicing. Takes a few seconds. So there we go, and we can also preview the file here if we want to. So you see, this file would take 1 hour and 19 minutes. And uh, we can start it again uh, if we want to. So here we can also go through the layers and see how, how the model looks inside and outside. So up here in the menu you can also connect to your machine and if you have it connected you can go through the onboard preferences. Otherwise you can change language and of course checks for updates in the software. You can go through the different views and, and the firmware updates and etc. if you have it connected. So, uh, and also the tools here on the left, you can of course select, if you have several SDL files, you can select which one, which part, um, sorry, which extruder it should be printed with. And there's easy tool for rotating and moving in and so on. So it's, um, it's very similar, very basic, uh, but if you have all the tools you need, you can do the support materials, you can change filaments, change um, temperatures and everything. It's, it's, uh, I, in, in my opinion, it's, it's exactly what you need. It's not too much, but it's also um, enough so you can actually print with different materials. So there we go. That's the um, different tools in the software, in Flash Print. So when we're ready, all we have to do is just click um, and sa save the file and, and let's print.
So, uh, to summarize this machine, um, I would say it's a, it's a really affordable machine. It has a lot of features based on the price. Um, it's quite easy to use and it's really good that it actually works with a lot of the, the different kinds of filaments. Um, I would have seen s a, just a slightly better um, filament spools or something integrated so you can actually use one kilogram or two kilogram spools uh, more natively. I would also like to see just a slightly bigger um, build, build volume but I mean almost five liters is, is good enough for a lot of uh, users. Uh, and also it could have been just slightly quieter, but that's Usually you don't really sit next to them. It's it, it doesn't gonna matter anyway um, Other than that, it's it's uh, it's a really nice machine. It has a, it has a lot of feature based on the price and uh, You get good results as you you've seen in the clip there. You have a lot of good print quality um, So I hope you're happy with this one um, If you want to see more videos, you should uh, check out the channel uh, if you like this video Please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down and, and leave a comment so I know what to do better um, Stay subscribed and, and you'll get more videos like this one. See ya. Bye